I'd like you to turn in your Bibles, if you have them, to John chapter 3, verse 1. I want to preach to you today, born again. Born again. If you are familiar with an apostolic church, this is not new to you, this terminology. Even in the uh, non-denominational evangelical world, you've heard this term, born again. Some people call it the new birth. John chapter 3, verse 1, 8, 1 through 8 says, There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. And this man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God. For no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly I say to you, Unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And Nicodemus said to him, How can man be born, born when he was old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, I can almost see the smile that crosses, crosses his face as he answers, Most assuredly I say to you, Unless one is born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I say to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes. And you hear the sound of it, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it goes. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. Praise God. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank You, God, for Your grace. We thank You for Your Holy Spirit that we feel in this place. Lord, drawing us closer to You. I pray for Your anointing upon me and upon Your Word. Lord, upon every heart that hears today in the name of Jesus. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. You can be seated. Nicodemus was a ruler of the order of the Pharisees. And this meant that, thank you, this meant that he was learned in the Scriptures and also well respected among his religious peers to become not, not only a Pharisee, to be part of that group, but also to uh, be elected or promoted, recognized as a ruler he would have had uh, to have the respect and people would have, uh, his peers would have had to look at him as someone who was worthy of that honor to be um, a ruler. Uh, we also learn that uh, not only is he a ruler, not only is he a Pharisee, but what we see in him is a man who is very sincere. Among his peers who constantly were a thorn in the flesh of Jesus, um, uh, to use that uh, proverbial uh, terminology, as they constantly challenged him as a group, as they uh, constantly challenged the order of the day and constantly uh, even ridiculed, pointed out how much time he spent with sinners. Yet this man came to Jesus and said, we know you're from God. So we know that Nicodemus was an honest man. He couldn't deny it. He probably wanted to, like all of his other friends, but you just you look at the miracles and you say, no one can do these things unless God's with him. And Jesus saw this. They saw, he saw that he was an intelligent man. We, we, he saw that he was a curious man. And... Uh, Jesus cut to the chase and He spoke of a truth that all men in their natural state are in the need of a spiritual transplant in our life. 
because we are dead and need to be awakened by the Spirit. If you have breath in your lungs today, you have been born of the flesh. You are a human being. You are made in the image of God. You are uh, God's purpose. You are God's design. And you are also living in a fallen world, uh, following the order of the carnal mind. And Jesus spoke the truth and said, You're born of the flesh. You will live according to the flesh. But if you want to know the things of the Spirit, if you want to be a part of the kingdom of of God. If you want to be able, Nicodemus, to understand the things that I am speaking of and why I have to dumb it down with these parables, amen, is because you not only need to understand with your mind the, the words of God from the scripture, but you need a transformation in your life. You need to be born also of the Spirit. And the way that you're going to be born of the Spirit is by being born again of water. And and you're going to need to be born again of the Spirit because without that you cannot see the kingdom of God. I don't preach to be harsh. I don't, be, I don't preach to push people into a corner. But the reality is, is that we cannot, as Jesus said, see the kingdom of God. We cannot be a part of the kingdom of God unless we're born again. This is why the world that we live in and the church are so opposite. It's not because we're ignorant. It's not because uh, the, the, the we're living on the wrong side of history, as some people say. It's not because we uh, don't have a, a love in our heart. It's not because we're haters. It's because we have been born again of the water and of the Spirit. God's Spirit lives inside of those who've been filled with the Holy Ghost, spoken with other tongues as the Spirit gave them the utterance. Amen. Been baptized in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Had their sins washed away. Praise God. Church, let me tell you, the reason that the church and the world are in such opposition to each other is because they're born of the flesh and have not yet been reborn of the Spirit. The world cannot understand the things of the Spirit. You cannot understand the Scripture fully and completely without being filled with the Holy Ghost. It's not an elitism. Because Jesus and Peter very clearly said, this is for everybody. It's available. Every single person that draws breath has the opportunity to be born again and have every full access to the citizenship of heaven. But we've got to take advantage of it. In Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1, we read this, And you He made alive, who were, in other words, previously... You are now alive, but previously, all right? I'm, I'm, being, very, I'm very, be, being very pointed about how I'm saying this. I'm not trying to be hurtful. I'm not trying to be ugly. I'm not trying to, to, to push you in a corner. But I'm just saying the scripture says that you were, you're alive now, but before you were dead. Spiritually, we need to be born Again, so that God can breathe life into our spiritually dead existence. And you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins, in which you once walked according to the course of the world. Amen? Some of you know what that's all about. Some of you walked according to the course of this world. For may, maybe for a short time, maybe for a long time. And you know the difference between walking according to the course of this world and then having the, the Holy Ghost get a hold of you, having you meet, meet, having God meet you at an, at, an, at an apostolic altar while you repented of your sins, amen? When you went down in the water in the name of Jesus and had your sins washed away, you know the difference. You don't live the same way. Praise God. There's more access to, I have more at my disposal. Amen. I can live a spiritually alive existence because of the presence of God. 
It's not an elitism because this message is for everyone. It's for every nationality. It's not just for Americans. It's not just for people that live in Thurston County. It's not just for, uh, it's not just for the first century. It's for every single one who draws breath. We're made in the image of God. And God looks at His image that is dead in trespasses and sins and says, Would you just come unto me, all you who labor and are heavy laden? Would you just quit, quit striving against the things that of God and surrender your life and allow me to breathe life into you. Who once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince and the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience, among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in lusts of our flesh. Amen. We've all been there, haven't we? Yeah, we've all been there. Amen. Maybe even some of you have come into the presence of the Lord and you weren't, weren't pr quite praying quite enough and you start to, start, to, start to slip back into those old habits. You start doing things according to the old habits, the things that you're used to. You got it. What do you have to do? You got to get back on your knees. You got to start pulling back away because it's just so easy to get swept into that habit because it's part of the old man. That old man is reaching up from the grave and clawing at you. Oh, but let me tell you about a church that is triumphant, that knows they've been filled with the Holy Ghost that says, no, I'm not going to live that old life. Get back in the grave, old man. I'm living for God. I have a new citizenship. I've been born again of the water and of the spirit and I'm going to live a holy life in the kingdom of God praise God among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lusts of our flesh fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind and were by nature children of wrath just as others there's no difference between those in the kingdom of God and those outside of the kingdom of God other than the overcoming transformational power of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 It's not because God saw you and said, yeah, you'll make it. Yeah, you're good enough. I want the smart ones. I want the athletic ones. I want the ones that can do this or can do that. No, he says, come unto me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. And it's those that said, okay, I'll show up. Without being born again by the Holy Ghost, we're dead. We're lost. We can't find ourselves in the kingdom of God. But those who've been born again of the water are now the children of God and walk in a new way. This shouldn't have been new for Nicodemus. You say, oh, this was, this was new. This was revolutionary. Actually, the prophet Ezekiel prophesied about this years before. If he, was a, if, if he was a student of the Word, he should have known this. He should have known about Ezekiel chapter 36, uh, verse 22, where it says, Therefore say to the house of Israel, God is instructing uh, Ezekiel in this passage, Therefore say to the house of Israel, Thus says the Lord God, I do not, uh, I do, not do this for your sake, O house of Israel, but for my holy name's sake which you have profaned among the nations wherever you went. And I will sanctify my great name, which, is, uh, which has been profaned among the nations, which you have profaned in your midst. And the nations shall know that I am the Lord, says the Lord God, when I am hallowed in you before their eyes. For I will take you from among the nations, gather you out of all the countries, bring you into your own land, and then I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you shall be clean. I will cleanse you from all your filthiness and from your idols. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes. Oh, hallelujah. And you will keep my judgments and do them. Then you shall dwell in the land that I gave your fathers. You shall be my people. I will be your God. I will deliver you from all your 
your uncleanness. I will call for the grain and multiply it and bring no famine upon you. Church, Jesus wasn't saying something that had never been said before. The prophet had said it and he's just putting it down in front of Nicodemus and said, you know what he's talking about? I'm telling you, I am the way, the truth, and the light that is bringing this into fruition. Oh, the prophet just saw it in the future, but I am here to bring it to you. I'm going to put my spirit in you. I'm going to take that old heart out. The reality is that we are in need of a do-over with God. Because our natural man is so far from him that we cannot bridge the gap. Jesus came to bridge that gap through giving us a second chance. Through giving us a second chance. Some people know what a second chance is all about. He's been called the uh, he's been called the biggest bust in the, in the history of the NBA. Of course, everybody's got opinions about these kinds of things. His name is Darko Milicic. A largely unknown player from Serbia was chosen second in the 2003 NBA draft, right after LeBron James and before NBA All-Stars Carmelo Anthony, Chris Bosh, and Dwayne Wade. <laughs> yeah, those of you who follow the NBA, you're, you're just like, who? Oh, I know them, but you don't know number two, do you? Amen. He was the biggest failure of all time. Imagine carrying that burden, being called that. Memes put up about you if anybody's paying attention. Anywhere you go forever, you're known as the guy who was drafted above Carmelo Anthony, Chris Bosh, and Dwayne Wade. You didn't accomplish anything. You didn't do anything. Darko never developed his talent. Uh, for his entire career in the NBA, Darko uh, played little. He scored little. It was a miserable time in his life. A reading, recent article on ESPN.com captured some of his anger and frustration. He would often come home after a game and channel his rage by punching walls in, the, uh, in, the, in his apartment. I was so lost, Darko says. I really came to hate basketball, you know. I just wanted to come home and live another life. He wanted to live another life. Well, that's exactly what he got. He moved back to Serbia. He settled down in, with his wife and his children and started a new life as a fruit farmer. He sums up his life and failures in biblical language because, you see, he embraced his Christian faith and he began to get closer to God, trying to deal with this fact that I need a second chance. I need some way to escape this horrible life that I have come to hate. And he had to do something different. And he says this, he sums it up this way. He says, I kind of feel like the old Darko died. Like when I think about myself or myself when I was playing, I feel like I'm sort of thinking about someone who is dead. Church, can I tell you that Jesus Christ offers a second chance at life, amen? But we've got to kill the old man. We've got to let that old man die. We've got to st stop, stop resurrecting it up every time things start going weird and start going back. We've got to stop going back into those old habits. And we've got to start realizing that if we have been filled with the Holy Ghost. Now, if you haven't been filled with the Holy Ghost, you need to be filled with the Holy Ghost, amen? But if you have, let me tell you, Jesus Christ says, I'm creating something new in you. As Ezekiel said, I'm taking your old heart of stone out and I'm putting inside of you a new heart. One that is breath, uh, breathed life into by my very own spirit. Then there's the necessity of the new birth is summed up by, by C.I. Schofield this way. The necessity of the new birth grows out of the incapacity. Listen to me, church. The incapacity. In other words, we're not capable of the natural man to see or enter the kingdom of God. Not capable. Right. Has nothing to do with intelligence. It has nothing to do with being able to, uh, to cognitively understand the words that Jesus said. Has nothing to do with that. You can cognitively understand those things, but yet not live it. You know? Yeah. Kind of like those golf coaches. They understand the mechanics of a perfect swing, 
but they can't do it. So they teach other people to do it because those people are the ones that are able. They have the talent. They have the intrinsic abilities within them to follow the mechanics. Amen. I've met people who can talk circles around me about the Word of God. They've got this scripture and they've, they've got it, half the Bible memorized. They can do this and do that, but they can't live a day for Jesus Christ in the presence of God. Because it's not about that. And he says it very succinctly, very importantly, that the incapacity of the natural man to see or enter the kingdom of God, however gifted, however moral or refined he may be, the natural man is absolutely blind to spiritual truths and impotent to enter the kingdom. For he can neither obey, understand, nor please God. Jesus laid it down and said, you must be born again. Amen. Oh, but when you are born again, Oh, let me tell you, those things that were so hard before become so much easier. Oh, those things that held you back, those same things that seemed to, to make it impossible to live a righteous life, which is true. You can't live a righteous life as a sinner. You have to be reborn and be empowered by the Holy Ghost in order to do it. Mark chapter 7 verse 20, 21 says this, From within, out of the heart, uh, out of the heart of men proceeds evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lewdness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. All these evil things come from within and defile a man. We need to come to grips with the reality that the temptation towards sin is not something from the external, but it comes from within us. There is a fallen nature within us that is attracted to sin. That's why we have to, as Paul says, die daily. I've got to go and I've got to keep burying that old man. Jesus said you're going to walk in newness of life, but you can't walk in newness of life if you keep feeding the old man. As a pre pastor, as a preacher, I am, I am flummoxed sometimes when people who are not living for God in any way, they're not even, it seems like they're not even trying. Maybe they are, I don't know. And they call up and they say, oh, you've got to pray for me because I need God to do this for me. Pointless. Total waste of time. You're not in the kingdom of God. God's not interested in blessing you. He's interested in saving your soul. Now, He'll bless you, but He's more worried about your soul. He wants you to come to an altar and repent of your sins. He wants you to lift up your hands and say, Yes, I want the Holy Ghost. I want to live a righteous life. He wants you to get into the water and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. That's what God cares about. Stop wasting God's time with foolish pursuits of the flesh. Amen. But you see, those that are not born again struggle to understand that. Why? Well, Jesus said it. Because that which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the Spirit is spirit. In order to really grasp that, you have to be born again of the Spirit. Amen. Amen. People say, well, I don't understand this about God. I don't understand that about God. Be born again. Amen. Oh, the gate is open. The gate is named Jesus. Oh, and that gate is always open. It's never closed. Amen. He's never on vacation. He's just waiting for you to say, yes, I'll come into the kingdom of God. Oh, yes, I'll repent of my sins. Yes, I'll be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Don't think you're capable of any good. Everything in this world is corrupt without God. We need the transformational power of the Holy Ghost to overcome our naturally sinful nature. Not only that, it goes on further because the new birth is actually a creative 
act of God. This is what Schofield says. He says, the new birth is not a reformation of the old nature. There's more coming after that comma. But I want that to sink in for a minute. The new birth is not a little fix. Like, you know, I know I've got a couple of problems. I just got to, you know, kind of, you know, get, kind, of, kind of work them out. You know, I'm, I'm a pretty good guy. You know, I, 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 I help people. I give to the Red Cross, you know. I mean, I, I cried a half a tear when I heard about Hurricane Harvey. I'm a, I'm a pretty good guy. The new birth is not a reformation, but the new birth instead is a creative act of the Holy Spirit. That's why in order to experience it, you've got to, not only got to be born again of the water, which is baptism, but you've got to be born again of the Holy Ghost. In other words, you've got to allow the Holy Ghost to come into your spirit and take over your life, give you a new heart, and get rid of the old one. Hallelujah. Jesus answered in verse 5, Most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born of the water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the Spirit is spirit. The promise of God is not a fixed self, but it is a totally brand new self. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, Paul says it this way, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Church, that's why as a pastor I can sit across the desk at people who say, Oh, I've had this in my past, and I've had that in my past, and oh, my parents had this problem, and I'm this way because of that and I can look at them with confidence and say oh but you don't understand you may have had that in your past but you are a new creature in Christ Jesus that is not going to hold you back just because your dad was a drunk doesn't mean you have to be a drunk you're a new creature just because your, um, your mother abused her children doesn't mean you're going to abuse your children you're a new creature in Christ Jesus just because your grandma was having depression doesn't mean that you are full of anxiety and depression you are a new creature in Christ Jesus. Old things, oh, they're passed away. And behold, all things are new. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. I bought an old car. On my way home from buying it, something went wrong. I was prepared for this. I bought an old car. If you buy an old car thinking that everything's going to be perfect for the next five years, you are foolish. I don't mean to prophesy over you, Sister Watson. She just bought it. Amen. We prayed over that thing in Jesus' name. You're going to be okay. I'm just telling you what happened to me. But I had to go get it fixed. Amen. It was a year and a half ago. Yesterday, <laughs> it was a new part. They put it in. Yesterday, something started acting up. Today, it really was acting up. Oh, man. I bought an old car. When you have something old that you fix, that new thing might be fixed, but you still have it attached to old things. That's why Jesus said, no, 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 we're not going to mess with this. Amen. I'm not going to fix the old you. I'm going to create a new you. Amen. I'm not going to let you live with the problems and the degradation of your past. Amen. I'm not going to let that sit in your life for the rest of your life. Oh, yeah, sure, we've got our old nature, but I'm here to tell you as a pastor and a preacher of the gospel of Jesus Christ, all you have to do is you have to say, no, get back in the grave, old man. You're not here. I'm a new creature in Christ Jesus and you can walk in newness of life with victory and joy and power that you did not have before. The new birth requires an act of faith. The condition of the new birth is faith in Christ Jesus and Him crucified. Hallelujah. Galatians chapter 3 verse 24 says, Therefore the law was our tutor to bring us to Christ that we might be justified by faith. But after faith has come, we are no longer under a tutor. 
11.6 of Hebrews says this, But without faith it's impossible to please Him. For he who comes to God must believe that He is and that He is a rewarder of Him who diligently seeks Him. Can I tell you today that just like the apostles when they came to God and said, Yes, Lord, You told us to wait until in Jerusalem until we were endued with, on, with power and we've been sitting here praising You, worshiping God for who knows how long, probably 10 days, and then all of a sudden the Holy Ghost filled that room and they begin to speak with new tongues just as it happened then, just as it happened at Azusa Street, just as it happened to me as a child in Tacoma, Washington, just as it happened here a couple of weeks ago to Hayden and James. Let me tell you, the Holy Ghost is real. God's power is undeniable and He's still filling those with the Holy Ghost who will come unto Him and say, Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. If we will believe in Jesus Christ, repent of our sins and seek Him diligently, He will meet us in a Pentecostal altar and fill us with His Spirit. When we surrender all of ourselves to Him and call on His name as we were baptized, He will wash us and clean us and give us a new life. And when that happens, now that has to happen, Amen. Amen. You can't sneak in through the back window, right? You know how it works. When you get together for a family gathering, everybody comes over, they open the door, you recognize the people that are there. But if somebody sneaks up through the back window and sits down at dinner that you don't recognize, they're not really part of the family. And it's not going to take a whole lot of time for you to figure that out. So we have to enter into the kingdom. Oh, but when you do, oh, hallelujah. And guess what? <laughs> when you are born again of God through the Holy Spirit, you are a child of God. And all those who are filled with the Holy Ghost are all the children of God. We have the same daddy. We've got the same lineage. We've got the same Holy Ghost. Amen. Through the new birth, the believer becomes a member of the family of God and a partaker of the divine nature of Christ. The life of Christ himself is in us. Hallelujah. For you, Galatians chapter 3, for you are all saved sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus for as many of us as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ there is neither Jew nor Greek there is neither slave nor free there's neither male nor female there all are one in Christ Jesus and if you are Christ then you are of Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise there's no nationalities in the kingdom of God. There are no races in the kingdom of God. There are no cultures other than Christian in the kingdom of God. There are no Americans. There's no Mexicans, Russians, Canadians, or Britons. There's no Africans, African Americans, Asians, or Native Americans. There's no 1% or 99% haves or haves nots in the kingdom of God. There's no rednecks. There's no deadbeats. There's no blue bloods or silver spoons. There are no conservatives, liberals, Democrats or Republicans in the kingdom of God. Those who are born again of the water and of the spirit are God's people and one family. And you need to get it through your thick skull. There's no border walls in the kingdom of God. There are no citizenship issues or national identities because all you have to do is become a citizen at an altar. All you have to do is say, I want in. You don't have to be born Pentecostal. You can, every single person who is Pentecostal has been born first generation at an altar down here crying tears of repentance saying, oh God, I'm a sinner and undone and I gotta stop living this old life. I want your life, God. I want your spirit spirit in me you're not Pentecostal just because you grew up on a Pentecostal pew if you're not living for God you ain't Pentecostal get your act together I'm sick and tired of the devil's entitlement mentality that he uses as a weapon to hold people back from the kingdom of God Oh God. 
had conversations this week with a pastor who took over another church. You know him. I'm not going to spend all time pointing everything out. But talking about the entitlement mentality that was placed upon the, the kids of the ministry. The expectation to be lifted up just because they were the children of the pastor. Oh, overlooking fail for faults and f- frailties. Trying in an effort by the, by, by the ministry to protect their children from something, not realizing that what they did instead was doom them to an expectation of entitlement. My dad's the preacher. My mom's the song leader. My, 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 my grandma started Sunday school in this place. Not recognizing their own sinful nature and the need to come to an altar and repent completely and live a holy life. And today they're condemned. Today they're not living for God. Today it doesn't matter what your daddy's name is if the name of Jesus Christ isn't on your life. There's no favorites in God's kingdom. What he's looking for is obedience. What he's looking for is obedience. As we can see in the scripture, we can see that David was one of God's favorites. He's called the apple of his eye. Yet, even as a favorite of God, when he did wrong, God sent a prophet to expose him. He didn't say, well, David struggles with this. He didn't say, well, you got to understand his position. It's tough being a king. There's a lot of things on your, there's a lot of things on, on, on your plate. There's a lot of things weighing on him. I mean, I know he messed up with Bathsheba, but you got to understand as a good looking king, one who's successful, people are just going to throw themselves at him. You just got to understand. No, 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 no. He sent the prophet and he said, listen up, buddy. You need to repent of your sins. You need to get your life straight. You need to change. I don't care if you're the king. I'll gave, I gave you that crown, I'll rip it right off your head. I've already done it with Saul. Right? Oh, church, can I tell you? Oh, hallelujah. We, know, we don't need that kind of mentality in our life, that, that, that entitlement mentality. I'm special because I'm this. I'm special because I'm that. I'm, I'm this or I'm that. I know, no, no, no. You don't understand. Amen. Jesus Christ said, come unto me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. It doesn't matter how long you've been in the world. It doesn't, you know, some, some of us, maybe we've lived, I've lived in the church my whole life. It don't matter. means nothing. I mean, there's there's some value in it. I'm not saying that there isn't. Amen. But I have the same Holy Ghost that somebody else who lived for the devil for 50 years and comes to an altar and repents of their sins. Amen. I have the same... uh, God has the same love for me as that with... uh, for for me as He does for that person. And so should I. Everyone who is born again of the Holy Spirit is equally full citizens of God's kingdom. Amen. There's no hyphenated Christians. Amen. Our, our culture, we've gotten into this thing where, where you're, you know, you're, you're uh, Asian American or you're African American or you're uh, this and I understand. I'm not saying that we shouldn't be proud of the, the culture that we came from from a, from from that perspective, uh, but but I do believe that supposedly we are all Americans. Amen. Praise God. That's what we're supposed to be. 
Amen. It's imperfect because it's an imperfect world. But in the church, it should never be like that. Amen. Praise God. In this church, hallelujah, you've heard me preach it. There's no first, second, or third generation Pentecostals. We are all first generation Pentecostals when we came to the altar and repented of our sins and were filled with the Holy Ghost. We became citizens of heaven, not because of what family we were born into, but we became citizens of heaven when we spoke with other tongues as the Spirit gave us the utterance. And so if all of this is true about the birth, new birth and what it is to be born again, can I... Uh, the, the question begs how do I become born again if I can't be born into it if I can't be uh, just brought in by osmosis if I can't be stuck outside of it because I was born in the wrong family how is it that I can become born again well Jesus stated it very clearly we must be born again of the water and of the spirit Peter brought it home succinctly on the day of Pentecost you've heard it preached this and this so many times our young people memorize it they can quote it inside and now Acts 2 38 then Peter said unto them repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit for this promise is to you and to your children and to all those who are afar off even as many as the Lord our God will call Paul wrote it this way in Romans chapter 6 verse 4 therefore we were buried with him through baptism unto death that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father even so we also should walk in newness of life I said it already but I'm going to say it again when you come out of that water you are clean and when you begin to speak with tongues you have been given a new heart and you are empowered to walk a new life you say, Pastor, how do I overcome a temptation? You get on your knees and begin to pray until you start speaking in tongues again. Amen. How do I deal with all of this opposition? You come to an altar and you raise your hands and say, Oh God, let this uh, heart that you have put inside of me feel your presence. The old man must die. We must repent. What does it mean to repent? Well, repentance is real simple you got to stop loving your old life. You don't have to. It's your choice. But that's what repentance is. I'm a sinner. Amen. we got to stop making excuses for ourselves. And say, you know what? No matter what reason, I did wrong. I'm not going to say, oh, but you got to understand, or oh, this came up, or oh, that happened, or oh, I got in with the wrong crowd, or no, 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 no. Stop making excuses and confront your old man and say, I did wrong. Now, don't condemn yourself. Condemnation's from the devil. Don't sit there and wallow and say, Oh, I'm just miserable. I'm never going to be able to be a Christian. I'm just the worst. Oh, I'm cursed. Oh, there's, oh man, my, my mom struggled in church. My dad struggled in church. My grand, I'm, I'm 14,000th generation Pentecostal of struggling apostolics. Oh, Pastor Dan said it already earlier. He who the Son has set free is free indeed. Amen. You got to come to an altar and you got to say, okay, God, you know what? I've been, I've been playing around with this for too long. I've been dipping my toe in the water. I've felt your experience. I've got the Holy Ghost goosebumps all over my back, but I just want to stay in my old life so bad. Uh, you got to get rid of that. You got to say, no, I'm tired of that. I'm done with that. I'm not going to go do, I'm not to do that. It's not really working anyway. And choose to live for God and stop living for self and according to, the mor according to the morals and norms of this life. Your culture's got to change from self-determined American to God-directed Christian. 
The old man's got to be buried in the grave of baptism. We've got to be baptized in the water. We can't be sprinkled. We can't be just saying, oh, we'll just put a little Band-Aid on it. No, you got to get that old man and you got to bury it down in the water, being completely covered, amen, in a watery grave in the name of Jesus. Not in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, but in the name that is above every name. The name, hallelujah, of Jesus. Hallelujah. That's the only way. Oh, and then, oh, and then the Holy Ghost comes. Oh, hallelujah. God's sitting there. He brings conviction and we respond with repentance. Hallelujah. And then we say, we then respond with that, uh, with, from that repentance with obedience and say, yes, I want your name applied to my life. And we go to the, gra- to the watery grave and we call on the name of Jesus saying, oh God, wash this away. Wash this away. Cleanse me. Amen. When they do surgery, they, do, they get all kinds of prepared. They get all kinds of antiseptics on themselves and they clean everything, right? Because they're getting ready for the new thing that's coming. They got to get it all cleaned up. I was rebuilding a car years ago as a kid. Pulled everything apart, couldn't find half the bolts. Friend, friend of ours, a friend, family friend of ours, we, he says, oh yeah, pull it all apart, you know, do the hard work, and uh, bring it over to my house and I'll, I'll, I'll rebuild it for you. Went over, he says, hey, I need you to come over. Come on over, I was expecting to see a miracle. And he hands me a box and he says, here, go clean these. Come back when they're clean. He handed me the parts of the engine back and he said, I'll put it together when they're clean. And I had to go scrub it and get it ready to be put back together. Oh, church, can I tell you, Jesus Christ, when we get into that grave, hallelujah, he's going to wash it all clean. He's making way because there's a new, uh, in, that, in that car, there was a new gasket that needed to be put on there, but that gasket couldn't be put on there until it was clean and the surface was prepared. Oh, church, can I tell you, when you go into that watery grave, God is washing it all away and he's saying, we're getting rid of all the dust. We're getting rid of all the residue. We're getting rid of all this junk because I'm going to put my spirit and I'm going to put Put my spirit in a clean vessel and that vessel is going to live a new life and there's not going to be anything of the old man left. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus. We, that quickening spirit. And for those of you who've already been filled with the Holy Spirit, we prove this every day by walking in holiness. Amen. We can't live and act and walk like we used to. Because you know what? It doesn't even feel right anymore. Young man came into into the church. His brother had been bugging him and praying for him. Uh, Well, I don't know if he was praying for him. I know he was bugging him. I think he was praying for him. For for like a year or something like that. Kept telling me, my brother's coming to church. My brother's coming to church. You know, after month three or four, I was just like, okay, does he know this? (laughs) He came to church. He started to listen. He started, uh, we started to do, uh, I think he got, the, I went to a, to a rally, got filled with the Holy Ghost, and uh, we started doing Bible studies with him, and he says, hey, this was Monday night or Tuesday night, and he, he says, man, I, I, I know I got the Holy Ghost, and, and I know it, it's different and stuff, but then I just, I, you know, I, I went to this party. I know I shouldn't have, but I did, you know. He's been pulled by his old life. And he, he says, it just, you know, it just, if, I don't know, I just felt different. Yeah, that ain't the same. You can't even be a good sinner once you've been in touch with God. You might as well quit, stop, quit doing it. Amen? You're not even any good at it. Everybody knows it. You're the only one who's holding on. Quit. Oh, hallelujah. You're not, the, you're not that person anymore because you're a child of God. Amen. And so we've got to stop acting like the old person. Don't go back to the grave and try to resurrect the old man with old habits and sins. Leave that old man in the grave. because I'm, And I'm also here to tell you, as I've mentioned before already, when you 
speak to that old man and say, get back in the grave, old man. I am not you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, hallelujah. All the power that was in Jesus Christ when he spoke to those legions of devils and he said, go to the pigs. Oh, hallelujah. Then they didn't even argue. I hear these crazy stories, these stories about people who have, you know, exercised devils and they're talking about how they argued with the devil for a half an hour or something like that. And I'm thinking, I don't think that's how it works. I mean, the, the Bible I read says that Jesus put his foot in Gadara and they took notice and said, Oh, leave us alone, leave us alone, leave us alone. He didn't even have to address them. They were begging him for mercy. A thousand of them. Not even one. You know how it is. I mean, I don't know if demons are like people exactly, but uh, when you get around somebody, you know, if, if you get around two or three people that are your buddies, you, courage. Man. We can take this, but you're all by yourself. You know, it's a different story. There was like a thousand devils in this dude. And they were afraid of Jesus. Amen. Church, can I tell you, you should not be afraid of the devil. You should not be afraid of your old nature. Hallelujah. If you have the Holy Ghost, you have all power of heaven and earth and beyond if there is such a thing. Amen. Every ounce of power in God is also at your disposal. <laughs> Praise God. Because here's the thing. Not even, not, I'm not going to say it that way. That's, that's not the way to, the way to say that. The reality is, is that God gives us all power, but we've got to use it. Amen. He stands at the foot of the cross and says, all you have to do is come to me. You say, oh, pastor, it's not that easy. It's only not that easy if you want to hang on to the old man. That's the only thing that's holding it back. And if you say, God, I want to live a holy life. God, I want to live a victorious life. I'm turning away from my old man. I'm turning away from my old existence. Oh, I'm turning away from the sins of this world. Even those things that I like, but yet your word says are not good. I can't understand why they're not good for me because I have not yet been born again. Oh, but I'm going to put my faith in you that I will have a greater understanding. Some of you who've had those have those wrestling matches in your mind, you can testify to that very same thing. I didn't understand what it was all about. I didn't know why I couldn't do this or why the Bible had a problem with that. Oh, but then I began to live for God and all of a sudden I began to see, whoa, oh man, I never thought that way. I didn't understand that I didn't have it why because he's just sitting there waiting oh trust me child trust me oh I've got your best interest in mind I've got your purpose in my heart oh I know what you need not just what your flesh wants hallelujah, hallelujah. would you stand with me here in just a moment as our musicians come I'm I'm gonna open up these altars I'm going to open these altars. Amen. You say, oh, I've been filled with the Holy Ghost. That's okay. Come and get, 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 get more. Amen. Hey, you say, you say oh, I'm, not, I'm, I'm having a good week. That's okay. Get geared up for, so you have a great week. Amen. Hallelujah. You say, oh, I, 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 put that, I put that old man in the grave last night. That's fine. Come on up here and stick him down further so you don't even have to deal with it tomorrow. Amen. Church, don't be fooled or lulled to sleep by the voices of secular Christianity claiming that we all, all we have to do is believe on the Lord and then live our normal life untransformed 
but with a belief in God and maybe a mission, missions trip thrown in here or there. Oh, I volunteered on the welcoming committee, you know, once or twice a year. Jesus, Peter, and Paul all agree that we must be born again of the water and of the Spirit. And then God gives us the power to live a holy and a transformed life. Amen? A transformed life. Amen? Praise the Lord. I look out here and I see those who have come from, from long periods of time in the world. Amen? And you know, you're not the same. I, man, that, that was years ago. I've, I'm different. Amen? I've had conversations with Brother, Brother Delph. We, you've talk, we've talked about it, and you've said that very same thing. Man, that, that, was, that was a long time ago. That was a different dude. <laughs> because God has been working in me. God's changed my perspective. And he's given me the power and the strength to overcome things that I didn't even think were possible. Amen. And access to that experience is every day. It never ends. Amen. Because you can go, as the scripture says, from glory to glory. You don't have to go from mountaintop to valley to mountaintop to valley. When you're living in the Spirit, you can go from glory to glory. Hallelujah. From glory to glory. Oh yeah, you're going to experience some valleys, but you may physically go through the valley, but spiritually you're not in the depth of despair. Amen. You're going through the valley on the way to the glory because your spirit through the power of the Holy Ghost sees and is not going to let you get drugged back by the old man. Don't be fooled, church. We must be born again. It's not just about what is required. Oh yes, it's required to be a citizen. You can't, you can't sneak in. You got to go through the process, right? You got to sign the documents. You got to be filled with the Holy Ghost. You got to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And when He fills you with His Spirit, Oh, your eyes will be opened to the things of the Spirit. And God will empower you to overcome the old man and bury him every day. Hallelujah. Every day, every day. His power dwells in you. And the glory and joy that surrounds you is unsurpassed when you're in the presence of God. When His Spirit is in you, He is your strength. He's your joy. It's literally joy unspeakable and full of glory. It's something that's hard to even describe because it's so powerful and so wonderful. Oh, church, if you know what I mean, would you come to the altar and enjoy the presence of God? If you want to know and want to have this in your life, would you come, amen, and begin to repent of your sins and say, oh, God, I need a change in my life. Oh, hallelujah. If you know what this is all about and you want to help somebody, lay your hands on their shoulder and begin to pray with them. Oh, God, bless them. Oh, God, empower them. Oh, God, overcome. In the name of Jesus.